Hi, welcome to Gooseberry Bridge Farm. I'm out here by the greenhouse where we've got our uh, round dish for Starlink mounted. Uh, there are other videos where I've got where I mounted this dish, and there's another one about our mesh Wi Fi. Uh, the reason I'm doing this video today is uh, the newer models that are coming out with the square dish don't have an Ethernet. Uh, wired Ethernet port. They are Wi-Fi only. That would be a real problem for me as I rely on that Ethernet port to plug into my mesh Wi-Fi. Uh, in addition, I've got a new one on, on order and a deposit made for one of these for my mom who lives uh, out in the country and doesn't have good internet access. Uh, Starlink is saying that hers should ship in uh, the next month. The problem is the Ethernet adapter that is proprietary that uh, Starlink sells is on back order and a lot of people on the groups that I that I am a member of on Facebook and Reddit and other places are complaining that the back orders are taking a month or so after you even order the dish that can cause you problems because you have to you know be able to use it in the meantime and you're limited to the Wi-Fi that it comes with so what I'm going to test out today is a third-party wireless bridge that I bought for about 30 bucks on Amazon and we're going to see how it works uh, to bridge the gap. I, whenever, if this works, whenever hers comes, I'll hook this up for her like this and then uh, we'll order the Ethernet adapter from Starlink because it's only $20 and that way we'll have factory equipment and the recommended stuff, but this will be kind of a stopgap for us. So I'm going to take you inside and we're going to look at the setup. Just to show you uh, the geography of what I'm dealing with here, my uh, Starlink dish is back there on the other side of the greenhouse and the cable runs through that greenhouse and I've got it uh, buried in a piece of PVC pipe across our flower field here. It's about a 40 foot span. And then it goes into the uh, garage right here. I ran two different conduit so that I would have both uh, network and uh, power in the greenhouse. So now I'm going into the garage and we'll look at the uh, actual equipment. This is my Starlink PoE ad adapter. So this black cable is what goes out to the uh, dish through the conduit I just showed you. And then this pink cable plugs into the Starlink Wi-Fi router. And then this cable plugs into my first mesh unit, which is uh, about 30 feet away. What I'm going to try to replicate here is making my mesh plug in to this little guy, which is a Wi-Fi bridge, and then have this connect to this wirelessly instead of through the cable. So I'm going to do a little setup here and I'll be right back. Okay, after the setup of the wireless extender, we now have lights on, solid lights, meaning that we have power, we have a Wi-Fi connection, and we are connected over here at 2.4 gigahertz. Um, you could do it at five gigahertz. Again, I'm just doing this as a proof of concept, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time setting up all the different things like I would normally set it up all the way. And the fact that it's only, you know, a foot and a half away from each other, uh, doesn't really make it necessary. So this thing is built for people who have a dead spot in their house. Uh, it will rebroadcast Wi-Fi. Again, that's not what we're after here. I don't care to rebroadcast the Wi-Fi. All I really care about is this uh, Cat5 or Cat6 uh, RJ45 port on the side of the unit. Um, this is built for people who have a TV or a maybe a game console or some other uh, device on their network that maybe doesn't have wireless capabilities. This thing will take the wireless network and then extend it out via cable. So what I'm gonna do right now is unplug my mesh Wi-Fi from Starlink and plug it in right here. Sorry, I only have two hands. Now what I'm going to do is go back over to my screen and let's connect to my main mesh Wi-Fi and see if uh, I've got connection.
Okay, that seemed to work okay. We got about 60 meg down on a couple of different tests. I'm not sure if that's Starlink just being kind of slow because sometimes, you know, it's only 40 or 50. Sometimes it's 150, 200 uh, down. So that could just be that. Just for fun, I am going to go ahead and switch over and use uh, 5 gigahertz as the connection between the extender and Starlink instead of 2.4 gigahertz. And we'll see if that makes a difference. Okay, this seems to have worked. As you can see, the uh, light for five gigahertz is on. That means I'm connected to this guy via five gigahertz wireless. So I think we've proven that this will work even with the new uh, Starlink square dishes um, by unplugging this wire and just having it plugged into the power adapter. I think we have uh, recreated what it would be like to have the square dish. So for all of you folks that are out there uh, struggling, waiting for that ethernet adapter, I recommend this little uh, bridge seems to be doing a pretty good job. I don't know how much stress it'll hold up to. I don't know how much traffic it'll hold up to, but um, I'm gonna leave it running on my network for a while and just see how it does. I've got, um, let's see, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 people using this Wi-Fi between a couple of different households here on our farm. So, um, you know, we'll put it through, put it, put it through its paces over the next few days. Um, if you're going to set this up uh, at your location, you know, do a little better job than I've done. Um, again, I'm just temporarying this up. I've got it plugged in here. I've got it right next to my UPS. That's too close. That's kind of a no-no. That might explain some of those high ping and jitter numbers that we had on the speed test. Um, you don't want Wi-Fi uh, devices connected that close to uh, a UPS if you can help it. Uh, on a side note, highly recommend getting a UPS for your Starlink or for any of your network equipment. Um, this guy was pretty cheap on Amazon, and uh, anytime power fluctuates, my internet stays on. Uh, it helps you, uh, you know, a power surge is going to help you when power spikes but this will help you if power dips as well, as well as spikes. So can't recommend enough throwing a UPS on your equipment. Uh, it'll save you life, uh, equipment life, and it will uh, help you out if the power just blips. All your equipment won't have to reboot. Okay, that's it. Uh, you'll find links to all this stuff down in the show notes. And if you try this out on a, on a version two, drop me a line and let me know how it worked. Thanks, bye-bye.